Hello, I'm AbbyX, Toy Cat, and one of Minecraft's most incredible seeds from before Caves and Cliffs had this village right at spawn with a ravine going through that village, and in that ravine there was a stronghold. This stronghold gives you direct access to an end portal, but there's one problem. In 1.17, an Amethyst Geo destroyed that portal. That's right, the 1.17 update rendered one of Minecraft's best seeds unusable until today, because if we go to that exact same point in 1.17.41, you'll notice that they've actually fixed this error and boom here is the ender portal once more It's really cool to see that they go through the effort of fixing this and you might question like well Obviously they fixed a bug But they fixed a bug that was already going to fix itself in the next update and in case you're curious as to what I mean by that Allow me to load up this exact same seed one of minecraft's best in minecraft 1.18 This is the seed by the way make sure not to turn on caves and cliffs if you want to experience it before it's gone But we're gonna make sure we do that and let me show you what happens when you load it up after the update because you might be expecting, oh, it's the same village, but with massive hills and with, uh, you know, new caves and stuff. But instead, no, it's a brand new spawn point, 0650. It looks like a brand new biome, honestly. It's a plains rather than a uh, roof forest. And then even more interesting than that is the fact that there is still a village here. But as you can see, the village shares basically no resemblance with the old one. Uh, basically, it's super far away from spawn. If you do eventually go here, you'll notice it's not the same buildings. And even more interesting than either of those things, you'll notice how there's no stronghold lying underneath. Here. In fact, according to Minecraft, the nearest stronghold is 3,000 blocks away from the spawn, meaning that yes, one of Minecraft's best speedrunning seeds has changed because of the 1.18 update. Caves and Cliffs Part 2 is changing the seed, and there are some benefits to how it is now, but it's significantly worse. This is something that is actually amazing for most Minecraft seeds, because some of the most boring seeds out there have now changed to become some of the most interesting ones. However, it means that some of Minecraft's best seeds will no longer work, and today I wanted to give you a little bit of a warning about seeds that you want to check out now before the update comes out because they are one of the kind seeds that will never be replicated again in my opinion. And obviously this super iconic seed that allowed you to go to the nether within a you know short 60 seconds of spawning is one of those ones that you need to check out. I mean even you're ignoring the overworld on this seed. I loved how the nether was this amazing fusion of a nether fortress right next to a bastion. I mean just look at this. Do you find this anywhere else? Okay, you do sometimes find it, but I'm sure you get the point that some of Minecraft's most interesting seeds will be going away, including the most interesting of them all. So this set of digits right here probably doesn't mean anything to most of you, but some of you are realizing, wait, no, no, not the infinite ravine seed, and yes, the seed that gives you this for an infinite direct at your amount in both directions along the negative x and it, it's one of those fascinating just set series of uh, you know ravines that causes one of the most interesting broken seeds in Minecraft's history this will no longer exist after caves and cliffs and the reason why is because they fixed the you know the exploit in the code and they've changed the uh, the world decoration engine so that most points will not use this seed for it and so will not become broken in this way and so that means that this exact point negative 470 negative 845 um, sadly after the update looks something a little more like this oh it's inside of a cave oh well this is I mean it's a nice dripstone cave you gotta you gotta give it credit for that but if we take a look at the surface where the dripstone cave is, sadly, you can see there is no sign of the infinite ravine. There's like a valley over here. The valley has a wonderful little village and there's a lovely snow-capped mountain. And you get to see some new 1.18 terrain that is very exciting in its own right. But it's just not the same as an infinite series of ravines, is it? We all know that that's true, and we all know it's tragic. However, there is one saving grace for this, because it is one of Minecraft's most iconic seeds, not being removed necessarily, but being fixed. Honestly, it's one of Minecraft's most iconic bugs that you can just see on this seed. However, something that I find to be uh, endlessly interesting is the fact that they have, uh, you know, fixed the seed when it comes to ravines, when it comes to diamond generation, when it comes to all sorts of things like that. However, Minecraft Bedrock Tree Generation is still the same. And that means that this infinite repeating seed does still make some things infinitely repeat, such as, for example, trees. Look at this tree right here. Doesn't it look suspiciously similar to this tree right here? The little square pattern followed by the, the diamond pattern. And then doesn't that look suspiciously similar to this tree right here? Even when we look underneath it, it's like, it's like, I mean, I mean, clearly it can't be, but it's exactly like it's the same tree. No, it can't be the same tree repeating, except yes, they can. They, uh, they fix many, many parts of the world gen engine, but they haven't fully fixed or changed, I should say, trees. And so you can get infinite repeating trees in the diagonal line. Obviously, they'll only spawn in the biome they're meant to, and so it's kind of less 
impressive in that way. But it means this seed has a very strange robotic look to it. So look at this, for instance. It's a oak tree, then a birch tree, then an oak tree. And they repeat in that pattern endlessly this way, which just feels very strange and off, in my opinion, in a really cool way. And yeah, the same thing is true, I am pleased to announce. Uh, for lava, which means that this is a really interesting seat. It's not useful for speed running like the previous one. It's not useful for things like that. But if you want to guarantee, oh, look at this. There is a sunflower floating above the lava here. Um, but if you want to guarantee that you can find some lava, just use this seed and your problems go away. Interestingly enough, as you can see right here, the same thing is true for water lakes, even though I, I thought they changed in 1.18, but clearly they still use the same part for decoration engine. And so if we follow this line diagonally, we'll find these water lakes forever. We'll also find what is, in my opinion, the weirdest thing, these spikes from a dripstone cave that probably shouldn't be out here in the open but somehow still are anyway. And uh, yeah, so there are still things that repeat. Look at these mushrooms. Look at basically any part of the world decoration engine that hasn't been touched or has been touched in uh, different ways uh, will stay exactly the same, which is pretty cool. And so yeah, this seed is no longer the same amazing seed, but it does still have some very odd quirks that show how Minecraft uh, and its world engine works. So there's one other very interesting thing, uh, or rather a lot of other interesting things, because every single seed that you know and love from the current update will change in drastic ways, besides the trees, apparently, which look exactly the same. Look at this, by the way. Like, look how similar these rows of diagonal <laughs> savannah trees are. Again, very robotic and strange in the coolest way. Just look at this biome. It's just, it's eerie and weird. And this proves that Minecraft's random engine works so well normally that you don't think about this all the time. Like, oh... Why are they in unnatural lines? Because even though true random should mean that this is possible, at least sometimes, seeing perfectly spaced out trees just feels wrong. It just doesn't feel okay. Speaking of things that don't feel okay, you might be familiar with the seed picker, or you might not be. In that case, let me show you how you get there. Because when you start a new world on bedrock, you can type whatever ludicrous nonsense you want, or you can press this little button right here and find the seed picker. And a lot of these seeds are quite iconic to some people. I think the one that people like the most in my experience is Stronghold Below, uh, where there used to be a Stronghold Below the spawn. Uh, but like a lot of people love these seeds because they're an easy way to guarantee you spawn in a mushroom island or a Stronghold or whatever else it is. Again, they're just pre-picked seeds that are pretty cool in that way. However, try and load up any of these seeds. Let's, I don't know, let's use a good example. The Mushroom Island seed is only interesting because you spawn in a Mushroom Island. However, after 1.18, do you know what's gonna happen? I hope that you bet on spawning on a jungle because yeah, you spawn inside of a jungle biome and the nearest Mushroom Island, there's no locate biome command on Bedrock, but I can tell you it's not within walking distance. And it's not even vision distance either. There is a jungle temple over there though. That's cool. And so yeah, a lot of seeds that are super, super interesting for one specific reason no longer are off this update. Actually, interestingly enough, Minecraft has put out a page on their website, it looks like this, uh, saying that they're actually looking for suggestions from the community regarding seeds that could replace these ones. And, uh, you know, as someone who's like been passionate for a while that seed picker seeds weren't honestly very good to begin with, uh, this is something I think I'd love to do. And so uh, let me know if you'd like to see that video from me, or if you just are passionate about seeds yourself, make sure that you submit some seeds over there because some of the seeds that have been submitted, I mean, I don't wanna, I don't wanna roast them too bad, so I won't. And so instead I'll say, oh yeah, this update is really cool, it's changing the world generation in a really interesting way, but that affects the world record seeds, that affects the world's most broken seeds, that even affects the seed picker seeds, because obviously every single seed is changing. However, there's one other thing that you might not have considered, or might have forgotten about, that you need to do before 1.18 comes out in a less than a couple of months time. Because as you can see, uh, Minecraft currently has three world options. The flat, the infinite, and the old world type. And the old world type is going away in 1.18, and even crazier than that, all existing worlds won't get new features after that update, which means that they're basically abandoning this world type and it will not be creatable uh, after this. So if you like old worlds and you even consider wanting to play one later down the line, make sure you pick a seed, you load it up in the old world type, and even if you don't explore anything, make sure you have it available because you'll never be able to do so after this point. Here's another weird thing. Because you can't and, and make these worlds after Caves and Cliffs come out, make sure that you turn on Caves and Cliffs as an experimental toggle because I don't even know what's going to happen here. Let's, let's find out, actually. I'm very curious. What will the world look like when we load it up?
The answer is, I think that the Caves and Cliffs toggle did nothing. <laughs> I think that, like, Caves and Cliffs and Old World type cancel each other out. Um, and so, yeah, these worlds, obviously, they're, like, little micro... Uh, it's it's a way to play Minecraft the way it used to be in certain ways. It's 256 by 256 blocks, only 128 blocks of height. That sounds ludicrous, like, why would it have only 128 blocks of height? But it does. Don't ask me why. Um, <laughs> there's no access to the never, the end. There's so many limitations on what you can do with these worlds. But there's a part of that that makes it so interesting to a lot of people. And so make sure you load up these worlds before the update comes out. Because you won't be able to after it comes out. And um, yeah, this is a fun reminder that like every Minecraft update is by and large, an improvement. I mean, if you look at the old terrain and you compare it to the new terrain, the new terrain is better. When you look at the world depth increasing, the world height increasing, when you look at all of the positive features coming in Caves and Cliffs Part 2, obviously it's a good update and it's worth downloading and by and large, people agree that. However, there is always this funny thing in my opinion that like every update is arguably making Minecraft worse in some ways. You can never have a Minecraft update that is objectively better in every single way and every single update, some people decide, yeah, we're going to stick back to this one. I think Minecraft Bedrock not allowing you to do that does have some interesting negative implications, but I also think it's pretty cool that, like, we're always moving forwards as a game. In six months, uh, you know, whenever, when Caves and Cliffs were first revealed, people said, yeah, this looks too much like a mod. In six months, it'll be like, oh, old terrain looks too old-timey. Like, is this beta 1.3? Oh, no, that was 2021 generation? Huh, how strange. Uh, because your expectations of what is normal changes all the time, and in a short amount of time, it'll be changing again. I mean, we used to think that this was the normal size for a salmon. Can you imagine believing that this is not correct salmon size? Big salmon, only salmon for me. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can become my big salmon. And uh, I hope that you all enjoyed because I guess I'll see you for next week's Seed Sunday. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of interesting seeds. Check them all out now. If you, if there's a seed that you've fallen in love with at some point in the last, uh, like eight or so years, make sure you load it up before 1.18, because otherwise it'll be lost forever. Also, I, I have to say, any chunks that you haven't loaded up before 1.18 will become the new 1.18 type. So just, whatever, seeds are changing, last opportunity, get them while they're fresh. And uh, if you want to see a video about other things you should do 1.18, things that you won't be able to do afterwards, because there is a surprising number, let me know and we can make a video down below. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.